Well, pardon my scruffy appearance, but it's Saturday. And occasionally Saturday means I'm busy with my day job. Today that was taking students out in the rain in the Oregon Coast Range. For working on creeks, I see a lot of people on the banks. I am not going to get that water again. <laughs> I'd get in. So I'm a little scruffy. But tomorrow, I'm getting a new cartridge. Not only a new cartridge, but a new type of cartridge. A moving coil cartridge. It's a Riga. Athita? Riga? And this bum <laughs> head shell. But apparently Riga's like a hundred ohm input. I have one preamp with a moving coil input, but it's got a 22 ohm input impedance. Riga's like a hundred. So I need to work on it. Otherwise it's not going to sound that great. And the whole point of getting a new cartridge is that it's going to sound great, right? Here's the old cartridge. It is an Audio-Technica Series 7. And it's not right for this tone arm, really. It's way too massive and high compliance, I think is the right word. It's a P-mount adapted to fit on this half-inch mount head shell. It's a very nice cartridge, very nice stylus, but just not really for this particular turntable, which is my Pioneer PL630. So guys coming to give me an amp to work on, a Dynaco ST70. His side hustle is like reviewing for a Hi-Fi magazine. He's got this extra cartridge that he just wants to bring and give me, which is friggin' awesome, right? But it's a moving coil, which is also friggin' awesome. I've never had a moving coil cartridge, but this is my only phono preamp with a moving coil input. It's a Fisher CC3000. Whereas for the moving magnet input, it has adjustable input impedance. For the moving cartridge one, it does not. And I looked up the spec, and it's 22 ohm input impedance. And that's not going to sound good with the Riga, which wants something like 100 ohm. Now what's the problem there? The problem is putting too big a load. A small resistance puts a big load on a thing. <laughs> So putting a small input impedance on a cartridge that wants a bigger one is just not going to be happy. But it's not super straightforward to change it. So here are the specs for the Fisher CC3000. And in particular, the moving coil phono input sensitivity and impedance, 70 microvolts, 22 ohms. This Riga apparently has more like... Um, half a millivolt or 500 microvolts and 100 ohms. So here's one channel of the relevant section. Got the moving coil input here. Do, 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 do a 6.8 ohm resistor forming a voltage divider with a 680 ohm resistor here. So that's pretty typical that the, an input resistor like this, the top of the divider going to be like 1% of the bottom. So while I could just change the input impedance by sticking sticking another 80-something ohms in front of it, that's not going to really do the trick if I've got 680 down here. I wouldn't want to change this without also changing this. And so if I'm going to stick, say, 80-something here, I'd want to stick like 8K here. You know, you can see how they do the variable input impedance of the moving magnet section here, where they've got a 180K uh, load resistor here, 47 here, and then they're sticking various resistors in parallel with that 180K, so 68, 39, or 220, to get either... 33, 47, or 100K input impedance. Since the input impedance that are after, they're all greater than 180K, then you can do this. Mm -hmm. 
so working out the numbers here for this being 680, this being 6.8, and the input impedance being 22, what does that mean that the input impedance is, you know, what is this 680 in parallel with? That means this 680 is in parallel with 15 and a half ohms effective input impedance on the on the other branch of that circuit. That is small, right? That is small relative to 100 ohms. There's no value I could put here to get 6.8 plus the rest of it equal to 100. The math doesn't work that way. If it's 22, 22 minus 7 is 15, 15.2. 680 is much greater than that. 680 in parallel with 15 and a half gives you 15.2. <laughs> Just barely more, barely less, right? I can only get less by putting anything here. I can only get less than the input impedance in the other branch. So it's 15.5 here. By putting 680 here, I can make it 15.2. There's nothing I can do here that's going to make the rest, the other branch bigger. The only way I can make the input impedance bigger is by putting a bigger resistor here. And again, if I put another, a bigger one here, I want to put also something big on the other branch of the divider. I don't know, this is all a headache, but yeah, that's the short of it. So I want to put something like an 8.2, or a, sorry, an 82 ohm here probably, and a 8.2K here. So I'll see what I've got. Open this up and get to it. So before we change the input impedance, we want to measure the input impedance. Can we do that with a DC ohm meter? Let's see. So power's on. So basically what we're seeing is simply that uh, 680 ohm resistance to ground. That's not impedance though. How do I know? Because I've got an LCR meter, and that's what we need to use. Okay, so with the LCR meter probes across the input, we get 18 and a half ohms. And that is at one kilohertz. While the R supposedly stands for resistance, it actually stands for impedance in this case. So spec is 22, it reads 18, whatever. We want to bump that up. In order to do so, we're going to need to change these little resistors here. <sighs> the one is 6.8, the other's 680. And that one's 6.8, that one's 680. And we got to do that on both channels. Replace those, with think, with um, 82 and 8.2K. Of course, in order to change those resistors there, I'm going to have to take that board out. Uh, that is, there's, I can't get at it from the bottom, it's mounted to the chassis there. You see one of the standoffs under there. So of course I've got to take out the screws that are holding it down. There's, you know, a bunch of those. I'm going to have to take these uh, thingies off of the switch thingies. And I'm going to have to take the back panel off and unscrew all of the inputs from the back panel via these screws here. I a fuckload of screws that I gotta undo in order to replace a couple of resistors. Uh, you can see that I've been in here. Of course every one of these plastic things was cracked. So I've fixed those up with uh, some foil, copper foil tape. Replaced almost well. I haven't replaced all the electrolytic capacitors, but I replaced a bunch of them. You can see all these Elna Silmic twos here and here, Rubicons and or Nichicons elsewhere, and new resistors. And here's the new impedance. So that should be cool, provided I didn't just totally fuck up the amplifying circuit. But I don't think so. But I guess we'll find out tomorrow when. I hook up my new cartridge to this thing to the moving coil inputs 
And if I get sweet, sweet sound, then this is all good. If I get... Then I fucked up big time. Wish me luck. As long as you like it, it's yours. I don't care. Thank you. That's awesome. Like I said, I got a bunch of cartridges. I, I have enough cartridges to last me a lifetime. <laughs>